Hi Miku, hello. <laughs> Oh, so, um, this isn't the content I usually make. For those new here, I'm actually an art channel, or at least I'd like to think I am. Basically, I draw things, but today I'm not drawing, but I'm showing my manga collection. And at first sight, yes, that may be unrelated, but my art is actually very inspired by manga, so in a way, it is very much so appropriate for this channel, and totally not me not having any art to show this week, so I'm improvising. Ugh. Anyways, if you want more info about my manga collection, there's more stuff I say at the end of this video, but yes, I just wanted to stall uh, without blubbering on for too long. So yeah, let's get to the tour! Welcome to the first area where I will be doing um, my manga collection tour, also known as my student accommodation room in the good old UK. So the first series I will be talking about is Barakamon. Um, it's one of my favourite manga ever, and it was technically the first manga I started collecting. I actually got it from my dad when I was a lot younger, um, and I didn't really understand the themes of the manga, but I picked it up later and decided to finish it. So there's all volumes of that. Then I have a few early volumes of The Promised Neverland, because I actually prefer the earlier ones, the later arcs are not my favourite. Um, I have the rest of the manga back at home. And then I have Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Um, I haven't actually collected the actual series, I just have this one shot. I have the third and fourth volume of Another. Then I have the first volume of this thing called En Attendant Lundi in French. I'm pretty sure it has an English name, or it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't have an English version, actually. Um, let me look up what it is called in Japanese. So apparently uh, the original title is uh, Detsi Yobi no Tomodachi and uh, it has two volumes so it's a two shot so I'm kind of waiting for the French translation to get both volumes out and when I will get my hands on those I will read it. Then I have, I'm pretty sure the last volume of Platinum End. Um, I have the other ones at home. I don't even know if I read it or not. Next up is A Lie. <laughs> these aren't actual manga books, um, these are just colored pencils. Um, they just were designed to look like books, so I just kind of put them on my bookshelf. <laughs> For those not believing me, um, wow, there you go. Colored pencils, see? I, I don't make shit up, it's actual colored pencils. Next up is uh, the series called Beyond Clouds. I'm pretty sure it's like a new mangaka. Um, I got it because I thought the art style looked really interesting. Um, but again, this is not the series I kind of bought all volumes of uh, before I read it. Next up is Deep Sea Aquarium Magma. Um, it's a really pretty manga so far. Um, like the whole cover art, um, all of them look amazing and the story is set in an aquarium, so there's lots of really interesting shots with characters and like fish floating around them since it's like in the aquarium. Very dreamy visuals, but a very real story. The story like picks up as it goes. Would recommend. <laughs> I'm gushing about the series here, but I don't even know if it has an English translation. <laughs> um, next shelf. <laughs> uh, and a few plushies. I have the first three uh, like perfect editions of Fruits Basket. I'm pretty sure it's like big boy editions of like two volumes in one, so I'm pretty sure it's the equivalent of the six first volumes. Next up is the entirety of the Evangelion manga. Um, I think it's like a really interesting part of the series. Um, no one really talks about the manga. The anime is obviously very popular and so are the movies. Um, but the manga in itself is another version of the same story with a few differences. One of the major ones being how Kawaru appears a lot earlier in the series and he's one of my favourite characters. Well, not one, I'm pretty sure he is my favourite character, but yeah, um, I got into the manga because I heard there's more Kawaru content and I was satisfied. <laughs> Next up is Bazak. Oh my god, this is a mess. Why is volume 6 upside down? There we go. Volume 4 is missing because I was literally reading it the other day. Let me go get it. There we go. Um, okay. <laughs> 
filming with one hand kind of makes life difficult. I'm also standing on my tippy toes because this shelf is quite high up, like this is my normal height. Uh. Oh, actually you can see pretty well. I've been standing up for no reason this whole time. Anyways, I'm still uh, catching up with Berserk. I plan on collecting as much as I can and reading as much as I can. I just finished volume 4, so I'll probably be reading volume 5 today. Um, yeah, it's what I'm currently reading. <laughs> Next up is uh, Fumetsu no Anatae or Tear Eternity. I've been keeping up with the series, I'm pretty sure since like volume 1 or 2. I knew uh, the author, Yoshitoki Oima, before because they also illustrated Koe no Kadachi, and I still haven't watched the movie. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a manga reader of this mangaka because I really like their work. So um, yeah, I actually want to watch the movie at some point, but regardless, this is about the manga. <laughs> um, I would really recommend the manga. I know the anime was quite successful, so if anyone here has watched it, um, consider reading the manga. And next up is Talentless. This is a pretty unpopular series. Um, it got, um, ooh, this is a worm on a string. Anyways, uh, Talentless is a pretty unpopular series, even though it got an anime adaptation. No one really talked about it, or at least I didn't really see anyone talk about it. And it kind of tricks you into thinking that it's a generic high school manga with like superpowers, like almost a My Hero knockoff. Um, it does a great job at tricking you into thinking that, and then it punches you in the face, and it's just, I think it's underrated. Check it out if you want. Here's the cover art. Um, and then moving on to my mini Junji Ito Shrine. Um, I'm pretty sure these are my only manga in English. Gyo and Uzumaki are in English. Sansa I got in French. Um, but yeah, uh, Junji Ito, my beloved. Next up is a TPN art book. Um, let's move this little plushy guy out the way. Uh, it's actually surprisingly big and there's lots of like illustrations and concept art in it. Um, I'm really glad I got it. Next up is Meliki, which I don't think counts as manga, but it is a French artist whose art style is really inspired by manga. Actually, his series started as a webcomic, so if the art style seems interesting to you, check it out. It also has an English version. Next shelf, starting with the Hatsune Mix manga. I never knew that Miku had a manga, but basically, um, for those who don't know, Hatsune Miku, the Vocaloid, um, was designed by uh, the character designer and illustrator K, and K went on and made an unofficial manga with Miku, because canonly Miku doesn't have any stories. Um, but if you slap unofficial on the manga, apparently you can make a manga with her. Next up is Monster by Naoki Urasawa, uh, who's the author of many classics like uh, 20th Century Boys, and Monster is a really interesting manga. At first I thought it would be like a more stereotypical manga because it's a classic, but no, it's actually set in Germany. Next up, ooh, if my camera would focus, next up is Pone, um, which is an art book by uh, Demizu Posuka, who's the illustrator of The Promised Land. Next up is... Uh, La Cuisine des Sorciers, which I, I don't even know the English name, I'm pretty sure it's basically it's just a spin-off of this other manga um, called Witch Hunt Atelier. Next up is the entirety of Chainsaw Man. Um, I actually bulk bought this manga when I went to France recently and just Chainsaw Man, I just think I need to talk about it. It's very popular these days. Mappa is making an anime adaptation soon. But yeah, here's, here's the cover art. Um, the story was really nice. I don't even know if I will watch the anime because as much as I like Mappa, the manga freaking slapped. Anyways, moving on is um, my brother, this otaku, or mon frère c'est otaku in French. Um, it's a very fun little one shot, surprisingly wholesome. Um, I don't even, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have an English version. Moving on, um, this is the last uh, few volumes that came out of Isabella Bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have most of the other volumes back at home, um, but it's a historical manga about a British woman uh, who explores the world and specifically Japan in this manga. 
It's really nice because it's historically accurate, so it kind of feels like edutainment. I'm like, wow, learning about historical Japan, but also having fun. Um, the art style is really nice too. Ooh, it's falling apart already. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm pretty sure this is this author's first ever original series, so good for them. Next up is Terrarium. Remember picking it up because I really liked the art style. And it is very pretty. So um, I think just based off of the art, it's probably something post-apocalyptic with like this lonely child and a robot, but um, guess I'll find out when I read it. Next up is Blue Period. And um, Written Familiar once again went to France, bought the first and second volume. I'm waiting to buy more volumes. So when I have like up to uh, whatever the French translation is, I can like binge read it so I don't have to wait a lot while <laughs> only having read two volumes. And then I have a one shot, um, She and Her Cat. Um, and it's actually a Makoto Shinkai story adapted into a manga. Very wholesome, would recommend. <laughs> And that's it for what I have in my uh, uni accommodation. I also kind of forgot about this <laughs> fun little Akira limited edition fancy box set. Pause! You may be wondering what that weird black thing is in the corner. It's literally just a piece of fabric that my flatmate loved there. This is what happens when you live with a costume design student. Hi, Cory! Um, that I literally cannot fit anywhere in my room, so I'm currently keeping it in my accommodation's common area. Um, I will eventually put it away. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I think, my most expensive and fanciest part of my collection. It's also in English, which, as I said, is not very common. But yeah, just... These are also, like, very thick volumes. Like, I'm pretty sure this is the biggest copies I have of anything. Um, oh no, I go back. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't actually gotten around to reading them yet because I'm currently reading Berserk and before that I was reading Chainsaw Man. So again, I will read it when I feel like it and also when I finish other series I'm currently reading. <laughs> so yeah, just a um, little bonus thing that is also part of my collection. Oh wow, I'm in a whole new location! <laughs> and also technically a whole other country. But anyways, time to continue the manga tour. So, starting with the first five volumes of Isabella Bad. I've already talked about it in uh, the UK, but here's the other part of my collection. Um, and then we have uh, Les Carnets de l'Apothicaire? I can't read. Les carnets de la... <laughs> Basically, I think by me being unable to pronounce the title, uh, it's kind of obvious that I haven't read it yet. So I'm hoping to collect more and then read it because again, I don't wanna read two volumes and then wait like months. So uh, yeah, yet to be collected and read. Uh, and then same thing with Comme on adieu. Uh, again, I saw it say two volume series, like it's only two volumes and then it's over. So I'm waiting to get the second one and then read uh, both of the volumes together. And another two volume long adaptation, uh, I Want You To Eat Your Pancreas, which is a Makoto Shinkai film, but there's a manga adaptation of it. And then we have A Romantic Love Story. I've looked this up before and sadly there's no English version of it yet, but if I'd had to pick, it would probably be my favorite shoujo manga ever, because it does have actual good aromantic representation. Uh, in manga. <laughs> it's about, it's basically a reverse harem with Kiryu sensei, the protagonist, uh, having like two classic love interests and it's the whole thing of like, oh no, who's she gonna pick? But the twist is she's Arois um, and I'm not gonna tell anything more because I'm honestly really hoping that it can be available for English speaking audiences at some point. But yes, really good series in my opinion. 
And then I have the physical copies of Bastage, which is a webtoon. Um, but they started selling physical copies of webtoons in France recently. So even though I've already read the full webtoon, I'm hoping I can collect the physical versions of it and reread it when I'm done with that. I don't know how many physical copies there will be. I'm pretty sure I've seen a third one in France already. Um, so whenever it's out, I will just bulk buy it and add it to my collection. Next shelf, um, I got uh, this compilation called Fleur de l'Ombre. Um, it's, I think, an older manga uh, I got from my dad as a gift, uh, but I have yet to read both volumes. Next up, I have uh, Witch Hat Atelier, or L'Atelier des Sorciers. Um, I've been really happy to see the English version of this manga kind of blowing up. Uh, it's pretty rad, to, at least uh, in my opinion, for a manga to get a like bigger English-speaking uh, audience. The artist's art style is gorgeous, um, just to like try and show a bit. Uh, they barely use any screen tone and most of what they draw is like line work based. It's really detailed and just honestly I need to study their art style more and improve my inking. So yeah, if uh, you want a really nice fantasy series then I'd really recommend Witch Hat Atelier. Next up is Platinum End. Um, <laughs> I have the 14th volume missing because it's in the UK. I think I may have bought it with me actually. Anyways, uh, I have the full series and now I remembered I did indeed read all of it and it's a series by the same illustrator and author of Death Note so no pressure but there's been big expectations on this. And to be honest, the only reason why I read the whole thing is because I'm a massive simp for the art style. Like, Takashi Obata, my beloved. But, uh, sadly, the story was not Death Note level to me. It was kind of silly. Like, it's basically a big battle royale, kind of Midainiki style. And, uh, the final shelf of this area. Um, starting with the first seven, not first seven, it's only seven, but the full uh, Koen no Katachi or a silent voice series it has, it's set in like school and it talks about bullying and disabilities, which I don't think lots of manga or anime have disability as a theme, so uh, really nice to, to see that, uh, a bit of representation here. Next up is Carol and Tuesday. Uh, originally it was a, a Netflix anime series that got adapted in to a manga. You don't really see that. It's usually manga that gets adapted into anime, so it was nice to see it the other way around. Next up is the first, uh, actually no, volume 2 and 3 of Monster. <laughs> wow, uh, this series is kind of scattered across everywhere. I'm pretty sure volume 1 is at my dad's, and volumes 4, 5, 6, and 7 are in the UK. Um, but yeah, I've already talked about it <laughs> in another location. Uh, so yeah, that was it for uh, this part of my collection. And welcome to our final and third location, uh, also known as my dad's place. <laughs> um, starting with uh, Oyasumi Pum Pum. Um, I had a lot of knowledge on this manga before I started reading it. Uh, I usually like going blind into things, so honestly I was expecting it to be something different. Um, I have very, I guess, varied <laughs> views on this manga and I feel like this short little manga tour isn't enough for me to completely explain how I truly feel about them, so I may like make a dedicated video to this, not gonna lie. But in conclusion, uh, it wasn't exactly what I expected it to be. I really enjoyed it nonetheless. I mean, I wouldn't say I enjoyed it, but uh, <laughs> the art was really nice uh, and I definitely want to check out more works by Inio Asano. Um, next up is the first seven volumes of Duritanity. I have the rest back in the UK. I also have one volume in English. Um, I don't remember why, but this made me compare the English version, which is a lot bigger than the French version, um, and it also doesn't have like a separate cover like the French version does, and that's uh, why in my opinion uh, most French versions are more accurate to the original Japanese editions. 
And then we have the first volume of Monster, as I was saying earlier. It's uh, a series that is kind of all over the place. <laughs> it's like, I'm pretty sure the only series that I have um, volumes of in all of the locations I've shown in this tour. And next shelf, the entirety of Assassination Classroom. I'm pretty sure this is my longest full series collection yet, with 21 volumes in total. Um, I'm hoping I can top that record with Berserk, um, even though I'm pretty far from getting all volumes uh, I want to have all of them at some point. Um, but yeah, it was, I think, one of the first series I fully read, so it's like one of the OGs that got me into manga collecting. Very fun series. Next up is a Penguin Highway. This is another manga adaptation that uh, was a movie first and then got adapted into manga. Next up is another, wow, the third and fourth volume got teleported in here from the UK, woo. <laughs> Next up is Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, remember when in the UK I said how I only had volume 0 and volume 1? Um, well, meanwhile, I also got volume 2 and volume 3. Uh, so yeah, I guess I started collecting Jujutsu Kaisen too now. I don't even, I'm not sure if the manga is fully out yet or how many volumes are out at all. I look into it and I'm definitely hyped for collecting this series. Next up is a two uh, series by uh, Jiro Taniguchi and he is uh, known for being like one of a different target audience Says uh, that didn't make grammatical sense. Um, he's an author who, in French libraries at least, uh, has a different target audience than most manga. Most manga are targeted towards young adults and teens, um, but this is more targeted towards adults, and that's why it's also a different format. But it's still a very interesting read, um, and the artist style is a lot more realistic than your typical manga style. Like, there we go, here's a panel in the back. Um, and like, in general, ooh, that's a smudge I completely forgot about, ooh, that's not good. Anyways, <laughs> um, his works are really interesting and I definitely would recommend them to someone who's trying to branch out into less popular manga. Next up, I have uh, somewhat of a Promise Neverland shrine going on. Uh, I have the volumes that I don't have in the UK, so 14 to 20. Uh, I also have volume 3 that I own in Japanese. Um, and uh, one spin-off that is a comedy parody of the first volume and a light novel written by the original author. Um, it's very funny because it's the exact same format and paper print type as the manga, so you would think it's a manga, but no! You've been bamboozled! It's all text! <laughs> and then I have two limited edition packs that I got for uh, volume... I don't know which volumes were in there, but basically they came with goodies like bookmarks, uh, an art book, um, and the, the visual... not visual novel, light novel. There we go. Next shelf! Starting with um, very few manga I own in Hungarian. To be honest, I completely forgot I owned manga in Hungarian. And this is a uh, volume 12 of Vampire Night that I never read because I didn't want to stop by reading the 12th volume of a series. So, uh, RIP. Guess I'll never read that. <laughs> Next up is a. Um, what are these called? I forgot the word for it. Basically, a compilation of works by different artists compiled into one. An anthology, maybe? Uh, I don't know. But yeah, it's uh, Edgar Allan Poe uh, short stories that got adapted into manga by different mangaka. Um, it was really cool seeing different styles and also um, I read it around the time that we were studying Edgar Allan Poe in school, so great timing. Next up are the first two volumes of Black Butler. Uh, I remember watching the anime like ages ago and I stopped collecting after volume 1 and 2. Um, I've heard the manga picks up and is more interesting than the anime, so one day I may keep my collection going. Uh, then we have... Kamisama. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a one-shot. No, it says one. <gasps> Wait, if there's more, I look you wanna keep collecting this because it was a very cute, dreamy series that I got from my grandma. Um, and it was really nice. I, I barely remember because 
I read this ages ago, and it was a kodomo manga, like、um, with a target audience towards kids. But to be honest, it was so well written and cute and enjoyable that I think anyone could enjoy this. And then we have the first normal volume of Fruits Basket.、Um, I started collecting it, like not even collecting it, I bought volume one. Ages ago, before even I watched the anime. And then I watched the anime and I was like, wait a minute, I actually went to collect the manga.、Um, and I found out that they had like a big boy edition of the manga in France. So that's how I got the first three volumes of that one that you saw earlier in another location. <laughs> Next up is Chi in Vidusha.、Um, it was one of the first manga I read as a kid because it is marketed towards kids. It's about, it's like a slice of life about this cute little cat. And it's fully colored as well. Like, whoop. See, fully colored.、Um, I only have volumes 4, 6, 2, and 3 here, not in order, because I'm pretty sure I gave some of them to my sister,、um, who's younger than me. <laughs> But yeah, really cute manga,、uh, nice introduction to manga when you're a kid. And next up are the first volumes of Talentless. I already spoke about this series back in the UK, But yeah, here's the first volumes. Next up is Flying Witch. Um, a slice of life series that、uh, was really cute and wholesome. I really enjoyed volume one. Next up is volume one of March Comes In Like a Lion. I'm pretty sure I started watching the anime for that one and it was really good. I don't remember finishing it, but I, now that I'm <laughs> doing the story, I definitely want to finish it. Next up is Shubi Shubi.、Uh, it was written by and illustrated by the same author as Chi,、uh, Konami Kanata. And it made me really nostalgic, and I was really happy to see her make a new series about a cat. So <laughs> I got the first two volumes. I may get more, honestly. It's like a comfort mangaka to me. Really cute. Next up is a volume of Nana that I got in Japanese. I'm pretty sure I saw it at a con, and it was really cheap. So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll get an authentic copy in Japanese. <laughs> Next up are two one shots.、Uh, this one makes me very angry <laughs> because the title in the French edition is Our Summer Holiday. I don't know why it's in English because it's the manga, it's in French. And I found out that the English version of this one shot, because yes, it exists in English, is called God Lies. And honestly, I think God Lies is a lot better of a title considering the story. I don't really want to spoil anything because it's a one shot, but it's really good in my opinion. And if you're new to manga collecting or just want it, because it's literally one volume, like it's not a commitment, it's really good, so would recommend to anyone. Next up is Our Summer Love,、uh, which. Maybe I'm thinking the publishing house must have wanted to write off of the success of Our Summer Holiday and made the two seem like they're connected, but don't be foolish, they actually aren't. And in my opinion,、uh, this one shot, it's also a one shot, is not nearly as good as Our Summer Holiday. It felt like a bit generic in comparison, so I was a tad bit disappointed. But yeah, another one shot. Next up, I have. Oh, I'm pretty sure this is a light novel, actually. Yeah! Is the Re Zero light novel? Because I was being a nerd and I was like, um, Re Zero is getting popular, so instead of watching the anime, I'm gonna read the light novel.、Uh, and then I realized that I'm dumb and illiterate and I prefer reading things that have images, so I got the manga. <laughs>、um, and I only have volume two of the manga and volume one of the light novel, so now I'm like, hmm, maybe I'm just gonna give up and watch the anime. Next up is volume five of Chi. Wow, I'm so well organized. Next up is Wakfu,、um, which is a French manga, also known as a manfra.、Um, it is. It looks exactly like manga made with screen tone and the same techniques, but it is originally in French.、Um, it, it's part of the same franchise as the MMORPG Dofus, if anyone knows that one. But yeah,、um, one of the first French、uh, manga series I got introduced to. Next up is a、uh, manga adaptation of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Not gonna lie, it was a really fun、uh, adaptation,、um, and it is officially licensed by Disney, so honestly, worth it. But yeah, not something I would expect from Disney. Oh well, I'm glad this exists. <laughs> 
Next up is uh, a manga I got at a French convention, uh, and it is volume 2 uh, of Ultramarine Magmal. Next up is uh, another manga I got as a gift that I haven't read, uh, but it is volume 1, so I may read it at some point. And next up are volume 17 and 18 of Nana, uh, and again, few manga I have in Hungarian of all things. Um, I've heard it's like a really good music themed series and I may want to check out either the manga or the anime at some point but again I just received volume 17 and 18 as a gift so I never really read them because I don't want to start in the middle of the story so yeah maybe one day I'll check it out. Next up is Les Fleurs du Mal which is uh, actually inspired by a French author Baudelaire. The Japanese version is called Akunohana if that rings a bell to anyone. Um, and I've heard there's also an anime adaptation of it that was really good, but I've only read the manga. Um, yeah, the art style is really good, and in general it does have the same vibes as the poetry collection that inspired it. Um, and I read it while we were studying the original poetry collection by Baudelaire in school, so appropriate timing <laughs> is the cover of the first volume. And next up is a classic. Death Note! Um, I own all volumes and the bonus one-shot uh, that came out. <laughs> the one that everyone was laughing about because um, it had Trump in it. <laughs> so that was a fun one. And then I even have, uh, ooh, this is very dusty, but yeah, I, I even have uh, the two spin-off light novels. Um, and I found out lately that this one is written by the author of Monogatari, like the Monogatari series. Um, that I plan on checking out eventually because they are a classic for a reason probably, but they, I haven't started collecting them yet. Next up are the first two volumes of Mob Psycho 100. Uh, I watched the anime before starting to collect the manga. Next up are the two first volumes of Erased. And uh, at last but not least, I have a freaking magazine that uh, a French publishing company gave away for free. And it has like a bunch of uh, free chapters from Oh no, I, I hope you can't hear my cat scratching on my door in the background. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up really quickly. Free magazine from French publishing company. Cool. Yay. Oh no, we've been interrupted by a cat. Hello. Hello. <laughs> cat interlude. Aww. Anyways. So, a uh, funny story, um, I forgot some manga, um, including these three volumes by Junji Ito, uh, his adaptation of No Longer Human by Ozamu Dazai, uh, Shiva, which is like a collection of his shorter stories, Tomie, which is a classic, one of his first fully published manga, I think, and uh, these two volumes that are uh, French manga made by a French YouTuber, so they, they were pretty fun. And yeah, that about wraps it up for my manga collection. So that was it for the tour, but I still have a few bonus information I wanted to share, um, specifically about the collection and certain things about it that some people may question. For example, the most obvious one is, why is most of my collection in French? <laughs> um, first of all, I am French, uh, so I started collecting it before I even spoke English. Um, and also, for those who didn't know, the French manga industry be booming. Uh, like, a lot more volumes get translated into French, like there's a bunch of series that exist in French that don't exist in English. Um, and just in general, I'm pretty sure that French translations are uh, also quicker to come out in France. And just in general, the manga industry is a lot more accessible in France than anywhere else in the world. Next up, uh, I'm still saying next up as it was a manga. <laughs> Anyways, um, next question or thing I want to address is the total of volumes I have. Uh, so currently I have 306 manga. Um, I don't know if that's actually accurate uh, because I'm not the best with numbers, but uh, let's say it's close to that. <laughs> And I've collected those uh, 300 plus volumes in the span of many years. I think I started like seriously collecting the manga, not like when I was just a kid reading Chi. Um, I'd say about when I was 13 or 14, so it's been 5 years about that 
amount of time. So yeah, uh, I've been uh, collecting manga for five years now. And I still am growing said collection. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Uh, to be honest, my goal is to have like a big bookshelf that's like basically the entirety of a room filled with manga. <laughs> One can only dream. So yeah, that was it for the video. Boy, this is the longest video I've ever done on this channel yet, and it's not even art themed. Um, so I guess this is me if you're still watching. Damn, you have a lot of free time. Anyways, <laughs> uh, are you interested in more manga or like otaku related content? I've been thinking maybe I could branch out and do not only art focused content so um, yeah maybe I'm gonna be a more diverse channel with uh, I don't know doing videos about whatever the heck I feel like talking about and maybe I won't have art content ready to present every week. Art blog am I right? But yeah this video is getting unnecessary long. Um, the, the YouTuber outro things, check out links in uh, bio not bio this is in instagram check out links in description uh upload next week okay bye <laughs>